I'm infected HIV and hepatitis C positive. Right now I'm hepatitis C cured and will never get that back unless I reinfect myself. The HIV is undetectable and I'm doing good. I met my daughter's father in 1977. The doctor said I could never give birth, so I never took protection. I never took birth control or used condoms or anything. I felt like I was in love with this man. And like five years, six years later, when I was like 25, because I was 18 at the time, I was 25 and I ended up pregnant. I went into labor and I went to Rochester General Hospital and I was in natural labor and everything was going fine. And all of a sudden these doctors started flying in and these nurses and they shaved me and, and said I had to have an emergency C-section. I wasn't understanding why, but this is something about her head can't come through my canal. And there was no real explanation because they had to do everything so fast. Ten years later, I went, 92, I went to the same doctor that delivered my baby through the C-section and um, found out I had HIV. And apparently during the C-section, and the reason why I was covered with all this blood was because some kind of complication happened and I had to receive a bag of plasma, which is blood. And in that time, they never tested the blood. So in that particular blood, I ended up with both illnesses and found out ten years later. So here I have a mixed child in the early 80s, already have stigma in her life. And then her mother's diagnosed with, back then was called the monster. So I'm like, oh my God, what do I do? No one to talk to. Because you know, I left the family way back yonder when I was little, so I don't have them. Now what am I supposed to do? So I took it upon myself to call it leukemia. It was the only blood infection I could think of that was legit on the books. People felt sorry for you and sad that you had leukemia because it was a cancerous blood that was gonna kill you sooner or later, but it sounded a lot cleaner and a lot better than HIV at the time. I tried to go to AIDS care when they were on um, South Avenue in 92. I went in, I talked to them, and you know, I got the first set of pills and I went home, but I never took them. So I just started using drugs. I started snorting cocaine, then I started smoking cocaine, and then I just let the drugs take over my life. My husband came and took his, took his daughter. Thank God she didn't end up in the system. He took his daughter and he took care of her till she was about 16. I came and told her the truth. She asked me why I lied to her all those years. And I said, because I wanted you to have a life. If I told you, if I said or went and got help for the HIV, then you would be stigmatized. Your mom's got the monster and you're already stigmatized because your father's black. So I didn't want those things to happen to you. I didn't want that hurt or pain for you to feel. So instead I medicated all my hurt and pain, buried deep from my father right up to when they told me I had HIV. Over 20 years, I used drugs, not taking care of myself. Just figured, well, if the monster got me, I'm gonna die anyway, so I might as well just go ahead and help it along. When I went to AIDS care, every year on March 4th, um, I take Amy, an angel, because she was my guardian angel that day. Her supervisor is no longer there, and she sent me in that back room and told me don't come out that room because her supervisor said send me home. But she took it way beyond, the, way beyond her call of duty, feeling I would harm myself, and she didn't want to live with that on her conscience, so she seeked help from me on her own and could have got fired on the spot for doing that, but she didn't care. She still helped me, so that's the guardian angel. She gave me a second chance by giving me the uh, strong overnight and then the rehab. So every year I celebrate with her. So I'm cured of hep C, living with HIV, became hired for AIDS care as the hep C peer educator, and I take patients to their liver biopsies, encourage them to do the treatment if they're eligible for treatment. I call them to make sure they're taking their pills on time. I go out to agencies and talk and do presentations on the liver 
and what exactly hep C is and how it silently eats you away so that you don't even know you have it. I tell you several different risky behaviors during my presentations, things that you wouldn't even think of would be a risk, but it was. Go get some help, because it's out there for you. You just have to meet the right person that cares. And there's many of them out there. There's many. And don't use the excuse you won't have any insurance or this and that, because there's many places that will help you even get that to get the help.